All right, we're back with another movie review. This time we're doing the kid with the golden arm. You know, his arm is golden. Come on. Damn it. Uh, this one. Nope. Where's my hands? Where's my hands? There's my hands. This one right here. The kid with the golden. Yeah, golden. The kid with the golden arm. I, if I say golden, I want to say gun. Because I've watched too much James Bond and mostly played Goldeneye. So my brain just constantly wants to go get a gun. But it's arm. This one. This one's a fun one. It's a kind of It's a bit silly. I kinda get I kinda get lost in a little bit into it and go, wait, who, who am I rooting for in this one? Who's the bad guy? Who's the good guy? Because honestly I'm just like the kind of both I guess they don't give off the stereotypical, like, bad guy, good guy vibes, it's just... I'm just like, wait, who am I supposed to be rooting for in this film? I don't know. I, I, I just like... Ah, fuck it up, man, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm just here to watch some fun kung fu. And that's what I got. It's a fun one, it doesn't stick around for too long, because it's only an hour and a half. Which is appreciated, because sometimes I feel like films can go on a, a little too long. Like, a lot of these we've, we've had in there have been like, yeah, two hours and hour and three quarters. And like, oh, this one's going along a little too long for my tastes. But not this one. It's just good, a good length of a little bit silly, a little, a little bit over the top. But it's kind of sometimes what you want. I'll be honest. It's kind of sometimes what I want is just over the top. Silliness. You know, let's let's just. Let, I'm gonna. So I'm gonna read the story. What I'm gonna say is, I recommend this one. This one's gonna be one of my favorites because it's a, it's a little bit like. Uh, 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 I think when I said it in my commentary, I was like, it's a little bit like, yeah, Power Rangers Super Sentai type kind of vibes of these very kind of these are the colors for each individual like main character. Yeah, the, the the very very like this these these are the distinct these are bad guys well the, these are these characters these are how, again like I said I get lost in who's the good guys and who's the bad guys sometimes but uh, yeah let me let me pull up the uh, synopsis and we'll go through it but I'll see uh, this is one I recommend if you haven't seen it I recommend it so once I find a story. I'll get there. Don't you worry. There we are. So this one's got really got a really long story for one that's quite actually short. It just threw me off a little bit. I was like, you know, I was like, okay. that length, like that's longer than a lot of the other films that are much longer. Like if you look at the last one, this Invincible show, I guess that doesn't really show up as. Uh, I guess that, 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 there we go. At the return to the 36 chamber. I think it's longer, but a lot shorter synopsis. But yeah. I guess because you got like four main characters, four or five main characters. Oh. oh, let me just pull up the. I had it on Wikipedia. So you got the. F yeah, the four. Four main chiefs. And then you got the f five main characters. Okay, there we go. Right, let's get into us. So, let me find the best position. There we go. Right, at the request of the government, the renowned Huawei Security Bureau is escorted to. Nope. At the request of the government. The renowned Huawei uh, Security Bureau is to escort a chest containing 200,000 uh, towels of gold to relieve the famine at Yellow River Valley. The owner of the bureau, um, Yang Huyung, who heads the mission, is a well-skilled well martial artist. As are his escorts, Yunju, nicknamed Longaxe, 
short sword uh, Li Li Kuing Meng and his fiance Leng Fang. The government also details this uh, special constable Hai Tao to assist. Uh, but when he does uh, does not show up, the escorts set off without him. Meanwhile, the bandits of Death Valley are plotting to take possession of the gold. The principal members of the gang are the Big Boss, uh, Gold Gold Arm Kid, Silver Spear, Iron Robe, and Brass Head. All vicious killers and martial artists. We repeatedly attack escorts, but how Hai Tao seems to appear uh, whenever they are in trouble and helps them escape from danger. Even despite his protection, however, many get killed in the uh, uh, course of the journey. During one instant, the Wang brothers yep, no, the Wang brothers decide to leave the gang and take some of the gold for themselves. But the instant they lay hands on the chest, they scream and fall dead. Hai Tao uh, finds this very strange and secretly confines his suspicions to Leng, F uh, Leng Feng. In the knowledge that it is uh, Hai Tao who is preventing his gang from taking the gold. Golden Arm Kid set out to fight him. Ling Kuang Ming uh, challenges Golden Arm Kid uh, by himself in an effort to outsmart Hai Tao. But he is killed, and Hai Tao and Golden Arm Kid finally confront each other. A fierce struggle ensues, in which Hai Tao puts, up, uh, puts out his enemy's eyes. Uh, at the, this point, the real Yang Hu Yung emerges from the cart, bearing the gold, and fights Hai Tao. Believing that he is more, uh, mortally wounded, um, he reveals his true identity and the plot. Uh, without realizing the full, um, full wineskin which the constable had concealed in his jacket had absorbed the fatal blows, Hai Tao then kills Yang instead. Just as Lang Fei appears, acting on Hai Tao's earlier instructions, and it's time to discover the truth. She kills Golden Arm Kid on the spot. Uh, of all those who risk their lives, it was only Hai Tao and Lang Feng who survived to complete the mission and escort the gold safely to its destination. What the fuck is... I... Yeah, everyone, like, fucking... So many death, so much death in this film. So much, just... I... <laughs> Honestly, it's one of those ones where I'm just like, the f fuck? It, it, it is, it's this kind of, it's a little bit bad shit. A little bit mad. And I kind of love it. Not gonna lie. I kind of love it. Um, And I really, I really enjoyed this one. Honestly. Yeah, I, I may have got a little bit lost in it, but fuck it. It's just fun. This is one of the ones where I'm just like, it doesn't really matter. We're not, because we've had too many recently which are like, it's a training montage. And I'm like, oh fucking god, another training montage. Jesus Christ, not another fucking training montage. Where the main character gets beaten up at the start, goes off to train with the master, and then comes back stronger. It's just like, so many of these films are like that. And I'm just like, Jesus, please stop doing that. And this film doesn't do that. So I gotta give it credit there, and it is batshit, and kind of fun, and some of the villains like you got a fucking brass head. It's the fucking dumbest thing ever, but I love it. Uh, I've got a soft spot for this film. Uh, doesn't have, doesn't have an original title, but this film came out in 1979. Whew, that was a while ago. I don't remember 1979 because I sure don't, because I wasn't alive or existed. That's how time works. Hmm. Anyway, uh, I'll get, like I said, I, re I recommend it personally. It's a favourite of mine. I think it might be one of my favourites in this set. It's not the most serious one, but it is one of the better ones, so. But yeah, I'm going to sign off and say I'll live long and prosper. We'll see you next time for another film I've already watched. I've watched The Magnificent Ruffians, which, if I heard that title, I'd assume this is some kind of weird British film. Which I guess it technically is, because we did own on... We did own Hong Kong for a while, you know, during its best years. Suck it, China. Uh, fuck the Chinese government. Hey, anyway, I'm going to sign off now before I get myself killed. Um, oh, what's that? Oh, looks like uh, there's some assassins in the window. Don't mind. Oh.